Laudator Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. In the headlines this Friday, May the 28th, U.S. bishops pray for victims of a shooting in California and call for a resolve to protect innocent lives. Mass anti-government demonstrations take place in Colombia. And Germany acknowledges atrocities perpetrated against indigenous peoples in Namibia and promises recompensation. In the Vatican, I'm Linda Bordoni. Several bishops in the United States have urged for prayers for the victims and their families after a gunman on Wednesday opened fire at a transit rail yard operated by the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority, located in San Jose, California. Father Benedict Mayaki tells us more. In California's largest mass shooting this year, a gunman opened fire at a San Jose Valley Transportation Authority rail yard in California, killing several people on Wednesday. The gunman, identified as an employee at the transit rail yard, shot and killed nine of his colleagues. He also died at the scene from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Following news of the deadly shooting, Bishop Oscar Kanzu of San Jose Diocese issued a statement calling for prayers, comfort and healing for the victims of the shooting, their families and loved ones. May shock and grief give way to grace and resolve, the bishop said, as we work together to protect the innocent and prevent such senseless acts in the future. He also prayed that peace may prevail in our hearts and communities. In the same vein, Archbishop Paul Coakley, chairman of the U.S. Bishops' Conference Committee on Domestic Justice and Human Development, issued a statement following the shooting. He said that the tragedy reminds us once again that something fundamentally broken in our society and culture must be courageously examined and addressed so that ordinary places no longer become scenes of violence and contempt for human life. He stressed that we must understand why these horrific occurrences of violence continue to take place in our communities and then unhesitatingly act to root out the causes of such crimes. Archbishop Coakley went on to point to the U.S. Bishop's continuous appeal for rational yet effective forms of regulations of these dangerous weapons, stressing that action is needed to attempt to reduce the frequency of these acts through legislation and training. I'm um, Father Benedict Mayaki. As protests in Myanmar continue against the February 1st military coup, security forces are increasingly responding with brutal crackdowns against demonstrators. The military's old conflicts with some of the armed ethnic insurgent groups have also reignited and churches have been targeted. In this situation, Myanmar's Catholic Church is organizing prayers this weekend for peace and an end to violence in the Southeast Asian nation. Robin Gomes reports. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, CBCP, is urging Catholics across the nation to pray for the people of Myanmar. On May the 30th, Sunday, the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, also designated as Basic Christian Community Sunday, we include in all our masses, in our cathedrals and parishes, a special prayer for the suffering people of Myanmar, and in particular for the church in Myanmar, wrote CBCP President Archbishop Romulo Valles of Davao in a letter on May the 26th. While the brutal crackdown by security forces against protesters have killed at least 830 people so far, the crisis has also reignited the military's old conflicts with some of the ethnic armed rebel groups in areas with large Christian populations. Many of the civilians caught in these fights have sought refuge in church institutions, which are no longer considered safe. Myanmar Cardinal Charles Boff Yangon called for an end to attacks on places of worship after four people were killed and more than eight were wounded when the army on Sunday night shelled Sacred Heart Church in Kayanthayar near Loiko in Kaya State. In an appeal on May the 25th, the Cardinal, who is president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Myanmar, condemned the attack, saying the country's great humanitarian tragedy needs to stop. This message of Cardinal Bo regarding this particular terrible act of violence committed against people gathered in a house of worship describes vividly and painfully the ongoing suffering of the people of Myanmar, Archbishop Valles wrote in his letter. He said the Philippine bishops have sent a letter of support to Catholics in Myanmar assuring them of their prayers. Meanwhile, St. Joseph's Church in the Moso town in Kaya State is also said to have come under the military fire on May the 26th, though without any casualties. 
I am Robin Gomes. In Ecuador, the Archdiocese of Quito has been offering a Christian burial for babies who have been aborted and abandoned by their parents. As Devin Watkins reports, the capital's auxiliary bishop celebrated a funeral mass recently for 25 innocent victims of abortion. Since 2017, 116 innocent aborted babies have received a dignified burial in Ecuador through the Babies in Heaven Project. Run by the Archdiocese of Quito, the initiative is carried out in conjunction with the Legal Medicine and Forensic Sciences Department of Ecuador's National Police. According to the Archdiocese, the remains of many of the aborted babies who have received a Christian burial had been kept in the department for several years. Others have been discovered in various circumstances, sometimes dumped on the streets of the capital. They are buried in the Santo Jardines of Santa Rosa Park, south of Quito. When the Babies in Heaven project kicked off in 2017, 51 babies were buried, with another 40 in 2018 receiving a dignified burial. Bishop Danilo Echeverria celebrated the most recent funeral mass for another 25 aborted and abandoned babies. Life, especially the life of an innocent, defenseless being, said the auxiliary bishop of Quito, has become something negotiable and is no longer considered something sacred. He affirmed that one of the painful realities of today's world is that we value only those things that are expensive, that have a high economic price, and what is given as a free gift remains in the background. In his homily, Bishop Echeverria praised those taking part in the Babies in Heaven project. He said that human life, which has no voice to claim its rights and no presence to be noticed, requires people with great hearts and a deep sense of dignity to assert their rights for them and to assert the extraordinary gift they have received for having been called into existence. Concluding the Mass, the Auxiliary Bishop of Quito asked God to move the hearts of Ecuadorians to understand that human life is sacred and that no person's dignity should ever be violated, especially if it is that of an innocent baby. I'm Devin Watkins. One month since nationwide protests flared in Colombia, Protest leaders are today launching a huge general strike. Less than a week ago, Pope Francis prayed for an end to political and social strife in Colombia and urged dialogue and the cessation of violence against protesters whom he said have the right to demonstrate peacefully. James Blears reports about a crisis which had a beginning but no end in sight. It all began with a proposed tax hike by the Colombian government which would have affected everyone earning the equivalent of $700 monthly. Intended to financially dig legislators out of a deep economic hole due to the pandemic and other woes, it instead buried them in an avalanche of anger and discontentment over a multitude of extra issues. The government backed down, scrapping the measure, but then announced they revisited in another form adhering to full consultation and input. President Ivan Duque's popularity in the opinion polls has now plummeted to an all-time low for a Colombian leader. The government's under intense financial and political pressure, which is increasing. Both sides are urging restraint today so as not to fall back into the cycle of violence. Previous harsh actions by the police and military in trying to quell demonstrations have significantly fueled fury and resentment. Structural reform is necessary but current talks appear to be stalling and going nowhere. The government's chief negotiator, Miguel Ceballos, resigned on Saturday. Protest numbers have been dwindling recently but that's likely to change today. Today. For Vatican Radio, James Blues reporting. Germany has acknowledged the atrocities perpetrated on the Herero and Nama populations of Namibia in the early 20th century during the years of colonization. Colonialism, excuse me. More than 100 years later, Berlin has recognized the massacre as genocide and has promised over 1 billion US dollars to be spent over the next 30 years on development in the country. Francesca Merlo tells us more. German colonizers killed tens of thousands of Herero and Nama people in Namibia, then known as German Southwest Africa, in early 20th century massacres. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas on Friday acknowledged the killings as genocide. 
As a gesture in recognition of the enormous suffering inflicted on the victims, we want to support Namibia and the descendants of the victims with a significant program of 1.1 billion euros for reconstruction and development, said Minister Maas, adding, I am happy that it was possible to reach an agreement with Namibia on how to deal together with the darkest chapter of our common history. The news comes after representatives of the governments of the two countries, with the involvement of the Herero and Nama, reached an agreement on a political declaration after almost six years years of negotiations. The document must still be signed, and in the past there have been disputes by the two ethnic groups with complaints over what has been considered as a campaign by the German government. The atrocities committed in Namibia have been described by historians as the forgotten genocide of the early 20th century. The Nama and Herero are two ethnic groups native to Namibia. Under German occupation their land was seized and they were forced into labour. When the Nam and Herero people revolted in 1904, the head of the military administration there, Lothar von Trotha, issued an extermination order and the Herero and Nama were forced into the desert. Anyone found trying to return to their land was either killed or put into concentration camps. Although there is no agreed figure on how many died, the death toll was in the tens of thousands, decimating the populations of the indigenous groups. I'm Francesca Merlo. And finally, Archbishop Mario Delpini of Milan paid tribute to the great ballerina Carla Fracci, who died on Thursday, aged 84. Through the art of dance, he said, which is gracefulness and levity, as well as arduous hard work, Carla Fracci showed us that the body can communicate messages of love, of pain and loss, of poetry and prayer. Carla Fracci, who is lying in state in the foyer of her beloved Teatro alla Scala, will be buried on Saturday. During her long career, Carla Fracci partnered the greatest of dancers, like Rudolf Nureyev and Mikhail Baryshnikov. Her personality, talent and charisma made of her a role model and an emblem of grace and beauty for millions of dancers and ballet lovers across the globe. Her interpretation of Giselle will be etched in the memory of those who had the privilege to watch her dance the great classic forever. In his message, Archbishop Delfini described the dancer's death as an emotion that has shaken the entire city of Milan and echoed across the world. Assuring her family of his prayers, Delpini concluded saying the glory of God transfigures human glory into fulfillment and consoles those who mourn its loss. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Vatican and World News. For more on these and other stories, you can visit our web portal at www.vaticannews.va. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. My thanks go to Roberto Colangeli in studio. Join us again tomorrow at this same time for more. In the Vatican, I'm Linda Bordoni. Bye-bye.